Hi, I'm Mike, and welcome to my little office. It's actually part of the Limestream studio, uh, which is actually right over there. And that's where Erin, my wife, and I are live every first and third Sunday uh, at 7 p.m. It's called Beyond the Ranch, and it's a combination of podcast and, and live stream. Uh, where we get the chance to answer questions from viewers and subscribers and have special guests and, and a whole lot more. So search uh, Beyond the Ranch on YouTube and come join us this Sunday at 7 p.m. We like to answer questions about ranching, beef, pork, chicken, whatever it may be on Beyond the Ranch. And we often get emails with questions about how food gets from a ranch like ours to your table. Now, some of those questions that we get are created because of misinformation. Unfortunately, uh, misinformation spreads rapidly on social media platforms. I saw one just the other day that said Biden or President Biden is passing a bill forcing all Americans to cut out red meat, where Biden's going to limit Americans to four pounds of red meat per year. Where do these come from and why is it that mis misinformation is often the, the most viral content on the internet? In, in an age of fact checking, you think that social media platforms wouldn't want incorrect information flying around out there all willy nilly, getting people all worked up, upset, and sometimes even downright angry. By the way, Biden hasn't proposed any limit on red meat consumption. In fact, the post actually originated with a British tabloid called the Daily Mail, and it ran from there, spreading like wildfire and pissing off meat eaters nationwide. To me, social media is a lot like a newspaper. You can use it to spread information, correct information, or you can use it as a tabloid to get clicks, views, create controversy with clickbait or just false claims, or you can actually use it just to line the bottom of your birdcage or your kitty litter box, whatever you want to do. So today, I thought we'd take a few minutes up here in my little corner of our office where videos are edited and eventually end up on your screens to talk a little bit about some of the misinformation that I've seen and also share some truths about beef and our industry. So let's start with this one. A Facebook user claimed that she's shopping at her local Winn-Dixie when she stops by to ask the butcher why meat is packaged in different color styrofoam packaging, some white and some black. The butcher then tells her that it's a matter of domestic versus international processing. He says the ones with black packaging never leave the U.S., while white packages are sent and processed outside the country and shipped back to be put on shelves. Her post was shared 80,000 times. Millions upon millions of people viewed it, and they actually thanked her for providing them with, with this information that they were never aware of. But is it really true? No, it's not. We even called our local grocery store. We were told that there's no color coding system for foam food trays. Normally, black and white trays are used for red meat, and often the highest price cuts are put on black packaging. Green trays are used for produce, blue for seafood, red for pork, yellow for chicken. And honestly, I've never really paid that much attention to it. But according to Albertsons grocery stores, the colors are there to help employees quickly identify while helping keep inventory, you know, up to date. So I guess, you know, they can tell what product it is based on what color it is. If you can't tell the difference between chicken and pork, chicken's on yellow. Works for me. So when you go to the grocery store and talk to your butcher, you do expect to get correct information. And when you care about where your food comes from, you hope uh, they aren't going to mislead you. Now, there's a thing called country of origin labeling, and that should be important to us all. Knowing where your food comes from, where it was grown and raised, and where it was processed and packaged is just as important. A package of chicken says right on the label, but beef and pork, there's no law that protects your right to know where your meat comes from. And people want to know, why else would a story about the color of styrofoam get such attention across the United States? Elsewhere, I was forwarded a TikTok video where another local butcher explains how you can tell where your beef is coming from. Check this out. Uh, so the USDA inspected is gonna be actually imported meat. It's gonna be inspected from Canada. Argentine, Mexico, or Nicaragua. Nicaragua. And the best way to tell is if it says inspected instead of choice or graded. 
the expected is always going to be imported. Your choice and your prime are going to be your actual USA. Local USA. All right. Yeah. Thank you for your info. Is it just me, or do butchers and grocery stores need to take a test or something? Thanks for your info, but it's wrong. And that video has now been shared 20,000 times. The USDA inspected stamp is proof of inspection by a United States Department of Agricultural Inspector. All that means is that it's been inspected and it's safe to eat, no matter where it was born or raised. Prime, choice, or select? Well, those are grades of beef, and some producers will actually pay to have their beef graded. The more marbling and fat content, the higher the grade and the higher the price. Select steaks are dense meat. They can be slightly tough, maybe a little bit less flavorful because of the lack of fat. Choice have more intramuscular fat. USDA Choice actually is the, it represents a, major, a majority of the meat uh, that you'll find in your grocery store. By the way, fillets and ribeyes or rib steaks, that's the best choice grade, in my opinion. Lastly, you find the prime grade. Now, it's the highest and best quality beef that you can find. In fact, only 5% of the beef sold in the U.S. is graded as prime. And you'll find most of that at your high-end restaurants and steakhouses. So, the butcher in this clip... And the best way to tell is if it says inspected instead of choice or graded, the inspected is always going to be imported. Your choice and your prime are going to be your actual USA. He's just spouting nonsense. In fact, our beef that we raise right here on the ranch, that I'm there for the, for the birth of each and every one, that I raise, that I finish, that I deliver to the processor and bring back home to the farm store, the stamp just says USDA inspected. And I know it didn't make a side trip to Nicaragua. Again, misinformation. Now has thousands, if not millions, of people worried about the wrong thing, looking in the wrong place and mad at the wrong people. Although I am thinking that the hiring process of grocery store butchers might need to be looked at, or at least they need some better OJT. So it's obvious from both of these examples that we just gave you that people care about where their meat comes from. These videos and posts wouldn't have millions of people leaving comments and telling their friends. That's why the country of origin labeling is important. If you buy a t-shirt in the US or a cucumber, it says where it came from, made in China, grown in California, whatever. Why doesn't beef or pork need that same treatment? Give thanks to the World Trade Organization on that one. Buying American, well, okay, buy American beef being labeled as such, it's been deemed to be discriminatory to livestock from other countries and their producers. No one's worried about shirts or cucumbers being discriminated against, but cow and pig, those need protection. However, there may be a change on the horizon. Proponents of country of origin labeling laws, myself included, argue that consumers have the right to know where their food comes from. And given the choice, it makes sense that they would choose American-made products over imports. That does give local producers an advantage. Now, opponents say that the return of country origin labeling for beef and pork will create a barrier to trade and could even promote a perception that import imported food is less safe. Lawmakers from Colorado, South Dakota, and from across the country want to take back our industry. And American cattle ranchers have a lot to gain. You can contact your representatives and express how important it is to you that you know where your food's coming from. And that's not misinformation. It's not the color of a package or a stamp or a grading process. It's the truth. And I believe that given the truth about where your beef comes from, the American consumer will make the right choice. Feel free to share that. Thanks for listening to my little rant today. Have a great week and a great weekend, and I'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.